All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery with IIMFL and Smart Money Alliance. It's my pleasure to visit with you this morning at 7.59 a.m. Central on Wednesday, October 7th. We get together most Mondays through Fridays at this time, right about 8 o'clock Central on this same Zoom bridge to talk strategies, techniques, best practices, success stories, and address your questions. In addition, we offer to schedule a weekly kind of mentoring, coaching, accountability calls for those of you that, that are looking to focus and, and generate a significant income because we do have a great opportunity to help a lot of small businesses and you should be generating significant income. If you're not, we need to figure out why because the marketplace need is dramatic the, the solution is, is polished and, and prepped and, and ready to go solve the problem, which is access to capital. And the comp plan is great. We have a number of different roles in, in our distribution partnership. We have affiliates. Affiliates didn't cost anything to be an affiliate. You sign up, don't have to pay a thing, don't have to buy anything. And, and that is a great option for those that want to help others and, and want minimal commitment. Affiliates have no involvement with client implementation, so the training demands are, are uh, minimal. We have financial literacy educators. They are licensed insurance agents, and, and so we have some people that come to us that are not licensed yet, and we help them get licensed. Others already have their, their life and or health license, and then they're working with the clients in the implementation process. One of the significant changes we made last month in September was to assign a dedicated financial literacy educator to every client that's going through the sequence. Those first four weeks, regardless of which program, which we're going to talk about at number one here on the agenda, it is crucial in getting their loan package together and helping build their financial literacy. So we need to assign a financial literacy educator to work with them. We are looking for more financial literacy educators. And so if you have your license or if you're willing to get licensed, we'll, we'll reimburse you for those costs. And it's an opportunity to do more, but, but make more money. So you, uh, pretty much all financial literacy educators are affiliates, but certainly not all affiliates are financial literacy educators. Then we also have our branch offices and our joint venture partners. We ran a promotion that's just about to come to a close. The end of, of the joint venture promotion is, is coming up on the 15th of October. Uh, what we've done is we had promoted for a period of time and it's already been extended, but we're, it's going to drop off as of October 15th. New joint venture partners can come aboard at a much reduced rate. It's, it's only $2,500. Now, why do we charge for that? Well, we're, we're providing more tools and resources and support, but maybe most importantly, joint venture partners, we're doing a 50-50 revenue split with. So it's significant income, significantly more income. So with that, uh, that promotion again is ending October 15th. So anyone that wants to become a joint venture partner under that promotion would need to do so by October 15th. Okay, so with that being said, we've got three items on the agenda Then we want to open up the lines and make sure that we're addressing your questions, your comments and concerns. So let's start with agenda item number one. So this stands for access to capital, just a, a, an abbreviated version. So the access to capital is the program that we've rolled out over the past few days, tremendous response. It's where clients are able to enroll and it, they can be a pre launch entrepreneur or early stage, typically those in business two years or less. And then what we do is there's no upfront cost. We guarantee them, guarantee them at least a hundred thousand dollar capital raise. There's no minimum credit score, no minimum time in business, as I mentioned. And so that is awesome. Now you still get paid and you get paid a lot and we'll go into that a little bit more, but it, uh, it is um, powerful because human nature is if you don't have to come up with some money up front, you're, you're more likely to, to do it or try it. So then let's contrast that with the Capital Ready 2.0. The Capital Ready Point 2.0 and the access to capital is the same exact curriculum. 
So, and, but, but the proposition, how, how it's proposition to the client is different, but it starts with the four weeks where we're going through, they're working with a financial literacy educator, we're improving uh, financial literacy, we're building the loan package, all of that is exactly the same in both of these. And then after that four weeks, then we're gonna work with them to raise capital, maybe in one tranche, maybe in multiple tranches or rounds. In both cases, we guarantee a $100,000 capital raise. So the, the programming is identical. It's the pricing that is different. So it's up to you and you can offer either of these, both of these, or of course, uh, neither of these. But with the access to capital, the client has no upfront cost, no upfront cost. So the way that you submit someone for the access to capital is we're creating, we've created a bunch yesterday and there'll be a bunch more today, free landing pages. And we'll come back and talk more about these. But all you do is put in the client's name, email, phone, and we take it from there. Now, what happens once they fill this out is it drops them into a drip marketing campaign. So they get little educational uh, promptings every three days. It'll drop them into a list that's tied specifically to you. So there's no question that it came from you because your landing page will be unique uh, to you as well. And uh, we'll take care of, of closing and implementing the client. In contrast, though, if you're bringing someone on in the Capital Ready 2.0, they're paying up front. So it's a $2,500 deposit. In the access to capital, we don't collect that deposit until after their first capital raise. In the Capital Ready 2.0, they pay that deposit up front. Now, in both cases, it's a refundable deposit to the client. Once they've reached at least $100,000 capital raise, they've done their part, then we refund back that $2,500 and the refund doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't charge back to you. So in the access to capital, there's no upfront cost to get started. Once we have had the first capital raise, then we invoice them and then they pay the $2,500. Of that, you're getting $1,000 and you keep that thousand even though they get their deposit refunded. In the Capital Ready 2.0, you collect the 2,500 from the client up front. So you're closing the deal. You're collecting the 2,500, 2,500, you keep half and you submit half. So you make an extra $250 plus you get paid up front in the Capital Ready Package 2.0. Here you make $250 less Plus you have to wait to get paid. But that kind of makes sense because you're gonna be able to enroll a whole bunch of people here because they don't have to have the willingness or the liquidity to pay up front. We'll wait until their capital raise. So other than that, the programs are, are the same as far as what the client goes through. The performance fee is higher here. The performance fee on the Capital Ready 2.0 is normally 9.5. And as a joint venture partner, you're getting half of that. You're getting five, approximately 5%. The performance fee to the client on the access to capital is reduced to only 6%. But as a joint venture partner, you're getting half of that. If you're an affiliate, you're getting 1% regardless. But affiliates are not going to be promoting this typically. Uh, but however, in either case, Affiliates are going to be paid 1% and through our affiliate model, we pay 1% three levels deep. And so that we're not MLM, we're not network marketing, but the power there is you can have sub affiliates and they can have sub affiliates, which would be your sub sub affiliate and everybody's getting paid 1%. That's going to be true in either of these. So are there any questions on agenda item number one before I move forward? If you can type it into the Q&A box, kind of like a chat box, let's make sure we're on the same page here before we move forward. Any questions on the difference? So the client programming is the same. The pricing model is quite different. No upfront cost here. So it's going to delay your compensation until their first round of capital. How long will that take? Depends on their credibility, doesn't it? 
Here, you're being paid up front. In fact, you're being paid day one because you're collecting the money from the client and then sharing half of it back with us. And that's why we're paying you extra or that's why you're getting extra because you're taking care of, of that part of the process. But it makes sense because you're the one that's talked to them. So again, we're normally gonna be doing the closing on the access to capital. You're frankly doing the closing if you wanna do a 50-50 split off the capital ready program because they're, they're handing over to you 2,500. In terms of total compensation, there's three types of compensation that you'll receive off of either of these. There is the portion of the refundable deposit, which we said it's 1,000 here versus 1,250 here, but you're, you're paid off the refundable deposit off of either variation of the program. Secondly, if you are a financial literacy educator, you're willing to actually work with these clients, actually mentor them, actually write the key person policy, then that's a whole nother revenue stream. So that's number two. And then rev revenue stream number three is being paid off the performance fee. And so if you're an affiliate, it's 1% in either case, again, 1%, three levels deep. So you can get overrides or overrides on overrides. If you're a joint venture partner, we're doing a 50-50 split, right? So that would mean that you're getting 50% of that 6% or you're getting 50% of that 9.5%. So what's the point? It's not to be confusing. You control what you take out to the market, right? You're generating the leads. It's up to you. If you just want to make it as easy on yourself as possible, you just drive people in to your landing page. Drive them in, drive them in, drive them in. We do everything else and you get paid. It's a good gig. If you prefer to do more and get paid more, and then the, the Capital Ready Program 2.0 might be preferable, but you can decide on a client by client basis. Tony asked about total compensation. So you'd have to add those three together to figure out what your total compensation is. Well, we know that each of these clients are going to have at least a hundred thousand dollar capital raise over time. So depending upon which hat you're wearing will determine how much you would project to make. Now, many of them will, will keep going beyond 100,000, but let's just use that. So depending upon which hat you're wearing will determine. If you close someone here, you make 1250 up front. Let's just say you make an even another thousand off of being the mentor. So now you're at 2250. And then if you're paid off the affiliate schedule, that's another thousand. So now you're at 3,250. If you're a joint venture partner, you're over 5,000. And then that math is essentially the, the same over here. So how much you get paid is dependent upon which role you're in, which it's up to you. We're not here trying to upsell you to become a joint venture partner. It's, it's up to you. And then if you're also going to help work with the client, which we call the mentoring process, which you need to be a financial literacy educator, then you do more and you make more. Okay, so hopefully that answered the, the question. Let me see what other questions we have here regarding number one. Oh, I'm sorry. And, and branch managers, we do the 50-50 um, the split too. So branch managers and joint venture partners, sorry, Peggy, are both making the 50-50 the off the back end. Okay, so let's see if we have any other questions. Uh, Glenn asks, what's the benefit for the client going into one or the other? Well, I think it's, it's up to you what you're going to introduce to the client, really, because the programming is the same. The capital raise to them would theoretically be the same. It's the pricing model that you're putting in putting them in and you're controlling that again. Uh, so I don't know that there's a benefit or a consequence to the client other than pricing, which we just discussed because the programming is exactly the same. So it's, it's whatever Mr. Watson, you want to take out to the market. Do you want to have your clients or some of your clients have no upfront cost? 
obviously doing that, you can cast a wider net. We got a number of you that's on this webinar that, that you believe, and I believe you'll bring in close to a hundred new clients this month, because when there's no upfront cost, then you can cast a pretty wide net. Others say, no, I, I want the client to have some skin in the game. I want to earn income up front. I like the 1,250 a pop. Therefore, uh, you're pitching the Capital Ready Program 2.0. So in short, Mr. Watson, it's it's whatever you're pitching to the client is what they're, they're going to get. Okay, let's see. Okay, so there's a question. Um, if you are on our team as a financial literacy educator, then uh, we'll flag you as such, and then you'll be eligible to be assigned as the mentor to work with the client. So financial literacy educators, even though they may be just dropping their leads in on the landing page, then they would be assigned as the mentor. And it's not that big a deal. We have four weekly calls with each client, normally 15 minutes a week. And uh, a lot of that ties in, of course, to getting them prepared and then writing the key person policy. So if you're a financial literacy educator, you would need to budget one hour in the client's first month, first four weeks to mentor them and then you would write the policy and you'd be paid off of writing that policy. How much do you make? It depends upon the face value and, and, and a few other variables, but let's just say on average, you make a thousand dollars for writing that policy and, and being the mentor for that client. I guess the point I'm trying to make is we want to align who is doing the mentoring weekly with who's writing the policy. So the client doesn't have all these different people that they're interfacing with. That's one of the changes we made. So we just need to make sure that we have you recognized as, as ready, willing, and able to do the mentoring, which means you're also ready, willing, and able to write the policies. We, we need more financial literacy educators. This thing's growing so quickly. We have 124 or something like that now, but we're, we're gonna need 250 by the end of the month. So if you want to become an educator or want to refer an educator, that's great. Okay, so let's see if I missed any questions on number one. We need to move forward. I think we answered those questions. Uh, real estate, yes, yes. So neither of these programs are specific to a certain source of capital. Like we talk about, there's three categories of capital that a business can access to, to grow. It can be debt-based, equity-based, or earned income. Uh, all types of capital are available through this process. We, in fact, need to take them through the process, build their loan package, look at all the variables to decide what they really are best suited for. But yes, Peggy, real estate is, is one of those. Okay, and Travis is asking. So yes, if you're going to be a financial literacy educator. What that means is we're going to train you, we're going to prep you to work with the clients through that initial four week process, especially. It's not that big a deal. Again, it's fun. I love it. I, I stayed late last night and, and um, have a growing book of, of, of clients or a portfolio of clients I'm working with personally. And, and uh, Travis, you're welcome to do that as well. But part of that four week sequence of building the loan package is getting their key person policy set up. Well, by state law, not by my wish or my desire, but state law says you gotta be licensed to do that. So if you're not licensed, Travis, we can certainly help you get licensed. We'll reimburse you for those costs. You know, you have to do the fingerprints and take the test and all that. But within 30 to 60 days, we can get you licensed. That makes you a more valuable resource for the clients. It adds a whole nother revenue stream. Okay, so I think we're good. Let's move forward to agenda item two. So we know that we need to make things simple, simple for the client, simple for our distribution partner, simple but effective, of course. And so the landing pages are working really well. So this is an example, well, it's an example, it, it is a landing page for the access to capital. If you want one of these, it's going to look 
remarkably similar. There's going to be a different URL because it's going to be coded to you, but it'll have the little nine minute video, a place to gather their information, a summary of, of the, the key points, which you should be aware of. And then they submit that. And then that drops them in again to the drip marketing sequence. It puts them in your list. So it's, it's your lead. And then we go close them and uh, contract them with via DocuSign. And then if you're a financial literacy educator, of course, in good standing, then you can be assigned the mentor. We're assigning a mentor for every one of these clients when we're onboarding them. So with that being said, how do you get a free landing page? Let's go back to the agenda here. There are two ways that you can get a free landing page. Now, do you have to have the landing page to submit leads? No, no. You can just go to Contrarian Accounting and Bookkeeping. Let's see if I have it pulled up. Yep. Contrarian Accounting and Bookkeeping. Click the Access to Capital. Help them fill out this application. Put your name in the referred by. Hit send and bam. You're getting credit and they're moving forward. Well, Obviously, if you just drive people to this main site, and if they don't remember to put referred by, then we've got a little bit of a problem because now they're not matched up automatically to you. In contrast, if all you're doing is driving them into the landing page, it's, it's simpler and also it's foolproof because it's coded to you. But my point is, you do not have to have a landing page to submit leads and to get paid. Now, with that being said, how do you get the free landing page? And, and we, we, I don't know, it's close to 75, I think yesterday that we, we set up and, and sent out. So there's two ways. You can either go through the access to capital program yourself because that will, well, of course it'll get you the capital raise, but, but equally importantly, it will help you understand the process from a client's perspective. We don't just keep getting on the Zo these Zoom calls and talking about it. You're doing it. You're going through it. And, and that's the most valuable training. So no, we're not requiring that you become a client, but that's one way that we'll give you a landing page. And frankly, what we do now is it's automatic. If you sign up for the Access to Capital program on your initial onboarding email, it'll already come with your landing page. So again, a bunch of you yesterday signed up for the Access to Capital program, partially to get the free landing page. Go back and look at your onboarding email and that landing page should have been included in there. If not, let us know. It's automatic now. Let's say, oh, I don't need a capital raise. I don't want a capital raise. I, I don't want to do that. Then the other way to get a landing page, because we want a knowledgeable person out talking about this, is come to our trainings. And we have trainings pretty much every Friday, start at 9 a.m., end 3, 4, 5 in the afternoon, depending upon how many questions and, and, and interaction. So we don't, we, we prefer, let me word it more positively. We prefer that those of you that are out talking about the access to capital program are knowledgeable because we've learned some lessons. You know, we've been at this for a couple of years now and typically dissatisfied clients come from distribution partners that were not necessarily being malicious, but were inaccurate and said things that weren't true so then the client comes aboard and they expect things that are different than what we do and also different than what we have in our written agreement because we always have a written agreement with the client. So how do we protect ourselves and make sure that the client is getting the best possible impression and, and accurate expectations? It is by either you going through it yourself so you know firsthand or come to train. With that being said again, you don't have to do either of those to be paid, to be an affiliate, but that's kind of the carrot to get a free landing page. And hopefully that makes sense. All right, number three, we just received the letter yesterday and we applied, I don't know, was it June or July? I don't remember when we applied, but we just got the letter back from the IRS yesterday. And as you may well know, the IRS Internal Revenue Service is the organization that reviews 501c3 applications and either approves them, declines them, or requests further information. And awesome news, we were awarded yesterday. So we're officially, our IIMFL is an official 501c3. 
Now, we were a nonprofit before because we set the entity up as a nonprofit, but now we're truly a 501c3, which is great. So let's talk about the benefits of that. As you're out talking to whether it be clients and or prospective affinity partners like churches, chambers, co-working spaces, business organizations and such, you can now legally and, and ethically and accurately say IIMFL is a 501c3. We didn't want to say that before. We'd say we were a nonprofit, but now we are a 501c3. Also, it helps with getting rooms. Now, where you're at in the nation, maybe it's not open much, but if, if you have an interest in teaching in front of live audiences, that's a great way to fill your funnel. Going to libraries, for example, we have the 27, and let me go show you. Let's uh, navigate over to IIMFL's website, scroll down. 27 mistakes, and you can click on this and it'll bring up the YouTube version of this. This is an awesome, awesome educational and lead generator piece. You could be out teaching this, teaching this 27 mistake um, presentation at churches, at chambers, at, 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 at all kinds of organizations. Normally you wouldn't charge for this. This would be a free education, but you're gonna fill your funnel. Well, what's my point? My point is if you go to a library or you go to other organizations and say, I'm with a 501c3 and we would like to set up a free financial literacy educational session to talk about 27 mistakes that keep small businesses from accessing capital, may we get that scheduled? May we use your room? A lot of times they won't only give you the room for free, they'll also take a very assertive role in promoting it. Some of my highest attended workshops I've ever done were at libraries. Now, again, you're not gonna sell anything at the event. You're not gonna enroll people at the event. You're not gonna charge them to attend, but you're creating a massive pipeline. And you might say, well, who am I gonna invite? So let, let's say I, I, I leverage the 501c3. I go to the library and they say, sure. And, and I've got a room, maybe they're gonna put it on their calendar and promote it, ideally they would, but, but how, what, what could I do to fill the room? Well, we've talked about that there's leads. There's, let's go to the career page, IIMFL. And right here, four top sources of free leads. So it's the second YouTube video on their career page of IIMFL. One of the top four is simply inviting to your workshop the 27 mistakes that we were just looking at let's go back to that right here new businesses so you could look around that library or around that chamber or around that organization and we can identify every newly formed business so if someone's formed an LLC a C Corp an S Corp even if just they just filed a DBA or assumed name certificate got a, a, a license you can identify that because it's public records. We, we show you how to do that in that YouTube video is just pointing towards and you can invite them out. That's very effective. Now, some of you don't want to educate. Some of you don't want to be in front of an audience and that's okay. Some of you would rather teach online and not in person. That's fine too. You could set up an event, bring people in, either play the YouTube version, which uh, so I can be your substitute teacher or in fact, you can turn around and, and teach it. Okay, so what we've covered over the last 28, 29 minutes is first the difference between the Capital Ready 2.0 and the Access to Capital. It's the same programming for the client, but the pricing and the timing of the pricing is different, which of, of course affects your compensation. We're not here to persuade you one way or the other to lead with the capital ready versus the access to capital. It is your choice. I, I like leading with the access to capital because I don't need upfront money and it casts a very wide net. But if, if I were in a different situation where I needed upfront money, then of course the capital ready 2.0 is an option. And you could always you know, start with one and then, and then fall back to the other if you wanted, but that is your choice. 
We talked about the free landing pages. We, we re-emphasized they're free, how to get them. We just had a training yesterday that we talked more about that, but we summarized it today. And then thirdly, we do have that 501c3 designation. And so we're not out looking for charitable contributions. That's not what this model's about. But now you're able to more aggressively develop distribution partners, set up workshops. And the workshop that I would be setting up if I were you is the 27 mistakes. If you've not watched this 27 mistake video and you're not very familiar with it, um, I don't want to say shame on you, but, but you should be because it's in, in my mind, it, you know, I'm probably too close to the forest to see the trees. I think it's really, really strong and, and it's not all rosy. It's not all, oh, oh, form a business, get a hundred thousand. It's that simple. No, we talk about what are the different credibility factors that you need to know. And I can tell you the clients or prospects that I've had go through this, come back and they say, wow, <laughs> there's a lot that I didn't know, a lot that I didn't know. Okay, Tony, thank you for that. So she said it was a, a great video. All right, so Calarissa asked, becoming a financial aid educator, will the clients be in the state that you're licensed in? Ah, that's a great point. So I, I think there's two answers to that. And, and, and I'll tell you my opinion, which shouldn't probably be the first answer. So if you're a licensed insurance agent, you're typically licensed in the state in which you reside. And so you can get a non-resident license in any other state, typically very easy. New York would be an exception. Uh, let's see, Florida, you got to do an extra fingerprint. Georgia, you have to have a notarization. But in general, in general, very quickly and very easily, you can get a non-resident license. So many of us are licensed in 10, 20, 30 or more states. There, we don't just go out and waste money, but once we have a client to work with, then why not? On average, it's 25 to $50 to get a non-resident license. Usually that's for a year, could be for a lifetime, I think like Michigan is. But the bottom line is to get a non-resident license in a state where you have a client ready to write a policy is kind of a no-brainer. So that's what most people do. But you could certainly be specific, Clarissa, and say, oh, I only want to write in these states and uh, we'll make sure that we have a uh, spreadsheet to keep accurate where you're willing to accept clients from. Thank you for asking. And Charlotte said the 27 mistake video was good. Okay, so let's open it up a few minutes for any questions that we didn't cover. We went through differences between Capital Ready Package 2.0 and access to capital, landing pages, hooray, hooray, 501c3 designation. Just got the letter yesterday. It was, by the, by the way, it was backdated back to the date of application. So technically we've been a 501c3 for months now, but we just didn't know it until yesterday. Okay, who has questions regarding marketing, client development, getting paid? Questions, comments, concerns before we, we break today. Okay, if there are none, we'll be back tomorrow morning at the same time. Thank you all for your time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.